Welcome to Flip Physics. Today I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about standing waves. If standing waves, as I discussed in my last video, are responsible for the musical notes we play all the time, then we should be able to put some numbers, some structure to that system. What makes a C a C? Or a D a D? Well, they're all really just different frequencies. Different numbers of waves per second. Different numbers of hertz. A high frequency is a high pitch note, and a low frequency is a low pitch note. But there are so many different kinds of instruments out there. Surely a flute doesn't make a D in the same way that a guitar does. Well, that's where boundary conditions come in. Instruments can either have open ends or fixed ends. A guitar has two fixed ends because the two sides of the strings are tied down. A clarinet, on the other hand, has one open end and one fixed end. The side that you blow into makes a closed end because you're closing it with your mouth. The side that the air comes out of is the open end. And a flute actually has two open ends because you blow into it from the top. The two ends of the tube are open. So the boundary conditions for a flute involve two open ends. The standing waves that are created in these instruments look different depending on those boundary conditions, depending on whether they have closed or open ends. An instrument like a guitar with two fixed ends produces standing waves that look like these. The ends contain the nodes of the standing wave. A fixed end will always have a node at its boundary. And if the ends have to contain nodes, these are the only possible waves that could actually fit on the string. You could continue this pattern on and on forever as long as the two ends contain nodes. So when you pluck a string, you create a mixture of all of these standing waves. But the main one you create is the first one, the fundamental mode or the first harmonic. That's the actual note that you hear. That's the frequency that gives you the musical note that you play. An instrument like a flute that has two open ends creates standing waves that look like this, because an open end always has to contain an antinode. So these are the only possible waves within a flute. And again, it's the first harmonic that gives you the musical note. The others are supplementary sounds that you hear on top. And last of all, we have one closed end and one open end, like a clarinet, for example. These standing waves look like this. Now we can use these drawings to derive helpful equations for each of the harmonics in these situations. Going back to the guitar, this first harmonic pattern is half a wavelength. So the length L of the string is equal to half a wavelength. The way you can tell that is if you continue the pattern, you would get back to another peak if you doubled the length of the string. So a full wavelength would require two lengths L. So L is equal to lambda over two, half a wavelength. We also know that the wave speed is equal to the wavelength multiplied by the frequency. If we plug this equation in for the wavelength, we get V is equal to 2LF. So this is an equation that works for the fundamental frequency of a guitar string. It can tell us that if we have a length L of a guitar string, and if the wave speed is V, we can figure out what the frequency F on the string will be. Frequency of sound produced. Now the second harmonic. The second harmonic contains one full wavelength. So lambda is equal to L. L is equal to lambda. Each length contains one full wavelength lambda. Do the same thing with the wave speed equation, plugging in for lambda, and you get V equals LF. So this is the equation for the second harmonic, otherwise known as the first overtone. For the third harmonic, the string contains one and a half wavelengths, or three over two. So L equals three lambda over two. Do the same substitution from the wave speed equation, and you get V equals two LF over three. So that's the equation for the third harmonic, otherwise known as the second overtone. So these are the three equations for the first, second, and third harmonic for two closed ends, such as for a guitar string. This gives you information about the standing waves created on a guitar string. When you do exactly the same process for two open ends, such as a flute, interestingly, you find that the answer comes out exactly the same. Even though the waves look kind of different, there's the same number of wavelengths in the length L, and so the equation comes out exactly the same for all three harmonics. The first harmonic still has half a wavelength. It's difficult to see, but if I extend the wave like this, the second harmonic still contains one full wavelength. It's just shifted differently. And the third harmonic still contains one and a half wavelengths. Now, unfortunately, one closed end of one open end, like a clarinet, is different. Following the same process, we find that the first harmonic for one closed and one open end contains a quarter of a wavelength this time. So L is equal to lambda over four. We do the same process of using the wave speed equation to substitute in for the wavelength. And our final equation comes out as V equals 4LF. 
And again, following that same process, the next two equations come out like this. We call them the third and fifth harmonics because it's three quarter wavelengths and five quarter wavelengths, but that's really just a naming pattern. It's arbitrary. You could call them the first, second, and third harmonics if you want, and I'm pretty sure everyone would understand you. So here's an example question. Jamie plays an E on a flute. The E note he plays has a frequency of 659 hertz. If the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, how long would the part of the flute that's vibrating have to be to create that note? So a flute is an instrument with two open ends, and the note that we hear, the note that you play on a flute, comes from the fundamental frequency of that flute. So we'll need to use the equation for the fundamental frequency of an instrument with two open ends. Plug in our frequency and our wave speed, solve for L to find the length of vibration, and we get 0 0.26 meters. So although I don't actually play the flute, presumably you want to press whichever button gives you a length of 0.26 meters. Whichever button is 0.26 meters from the end. See, you can practically play the flute already. All thanks to physics. You're welcome. Thanks for watching Flip Physics. If you like this video, you can press the like button. You can also subscribe or go to the flipphysics.net website. But most of all, don't forget to leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts, and suggestions. Until next time, keep questioning.